What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I want to talk about my opinion on the top 10 most precision knife manufacturers. Now with that word manufacturers comes of course the uh, essentially the topic here is production knives. Uh, anywhere from you know what what uh, we consider to be you know kind of mainstream high-end production all the way up to ridiculously high-end production right and uh, in some cases possibly teetering into mid tech or you know as some people uh, refer it to as custom tech but we're not talking about custom knives why because custom knives are handmade fully handmade and with that handmade nature comes the likeliness for error why because you know human error like i mean i trying to make a folding knife with my bare hands would inevitably result in some error so who this is for i mean a lot of none of these knives are going to really surprise a whole lot of people but who this is for is people who might be new to the knife world or maybe they've existed in the knife world for a while and they're like, all right, I'm ready to spend some money. I want to get a really nice knife. I don't necessarily care about whether or not it's custom. I'm just really, really nitpicky about the final product, the fit and finish. I want to make sure that everything is precision. So I'm going to give you my opinion on the top 10 manufacturers who do that the best. Um, keep in mind, guys, this is based on knives that I have actually experienced. So I know somebody's going to shout out, Rockstead, I've never experienced a Rockstead, so I can't, <laughs> I can't give you my opinion. I'm sure they're great, but can't give you my opinion, right? Um, I also know that this is going to cause some confusion in terms of the categorization, you know, for production knives, but whatever, it always does. So let's go ahead and uh, move on here. Guys, as usual, just to let you know real quick, I do have Patreon, so if you'd like to get your hands on one of these cool stickers and at the same time support my channel, you can find my Patreon link down in the description. At 90 patrons, I will be doing an awesome knife giveaway that benefits everybody, not just patrons. Literally everybody can enter for free. So if you'd like to help me achieve that goal and support the channel at the same time and gain access to my once a week Patreon exclusive content, um, check out the description. You can get yourself a shout out, shout out your Instagram, your YouTube, whatever you'd like. Anyways, let's go ahead and start off here. I'm gonna start out with number 10. And that's zero tolerance knives. Um, zero tolerance, I know like people are kind of on one side of the fence or the other, but I'll tell you this, I have experienced a ton of ZT knives. Um, big fan of them in the past, not so much here recently, but I can't deny that their, um, you know, their precision manufacturing is on point. I know people are gonna talk about, oh, lock face geometry issues and blah, that, that was occurring at some point. Um, I think that they have uh, solved that issue more so here currently. But in terms of the final product, what you always get are centered blades. You always get great action. All of the lines meet up. I've never seen any issue with the hardware or anything like that. As is the case with any manufacturer and is probably the case with any of the knives that I'm gonna lay out here today to talk about, there are anomalies. So you'll get one person go, I had one that was, but you know, that's, that is the case, you know, like no, no company is without flaw. But in terms of my experience with Zero Tolerance, Man, they just get it right 99% of the time. Um, these are US knives. Um, ZT knives, for anybody who doesn't know, tend to run between about $200 and $300 as of late. They use materials like 6AL4V titanium. They do some 3D machining. And then they use blade steels like CPM 20CV. So I think well deserving of the number 10 spot. Moving on to number nine, a Chinese company. Yes, we are gonna be talking about Chinese companies today. And that's We Knives taking uh, uh, form in this production uh, Apervis Zerks. Good Lord, this is um, this is one of my favorite uh, uh, production knives in general. This thing is beautiful. I mean, talk about precision here. This is insane. So We Knives has always had a reputation for being a uh, a brand that gets it right. Right, the final product. When you get a We Knife, you know that it's going to be made well. And that is the case. You know, I've, I've handled quite a few Wii knives on this channel. I've always been impressed. But here lately, if, the, if this A Purvis Zerks is any indication of where they're going in the future, um, we are looking at a very, very uh, serious knife manufacturing company. Um, these guys absolutely did get it right. You can see their lines on the pivot collar is just perfect. The, uh, the uh, 3D milling lines here on the titanium, the contouring, how the uh, uh, screws fit into the scales. Um, the uh, backspacer fitment, things like that. I mean, a lot of people might look at this and go, what's so, what's, you know, so much different about that, you know, versus uh, 
I don't know. I mean, so there's there's a lot of other brands out there. The truth is, is that it's very, very close. I mean, there was like, there's probably 20 other knife manufacturers out there that could have, you know, in one way, shape or form made it to this list. But just in my experience, you know, Wii's just above a lot of those brands. Absolutely. So very deserving of the number nine spot. Um, moving on here to number eight, one that I recently found really shocked me, really, really shocked me. And that's Strider knives, the actual Strider knives. I've always assumed that Striders were a bit clunky <laughs> because they look clunky. I mean, who's with me? They look a little clunky. Now, th to me, this is beautiful. I love the aggressive sort of, you know, battlefield look on this thing. But the truth is, is that up close, taking a look at this blade, I mean, this is precision. This is like Rick Hinderer precision. I, I was really happy taking a look at how everything met up. The titanium here, the aluminum on this side, the fitment of the pivot, you know, the lock face, all of the hardware, everything. I mean, it is kind of a blunky, uh, blocky, chunky design, but at the same time, like everything is precision. There is no doubt in my mind, you know, that uh, tolerances on these guys are just perfect. Now, that he commands a high price for these. These are made in the United States, and they are scarce, right? Now, in the past, I think Strider, along with, you know, you hear this about Rick Hinder Knives, too. In the early days, you talk, you hear about, you know, um, well, there's some play here and there, and, you know, things, parts aren't quite meeting up. Um, this is a uh, this is a newer variant of a Strider SMF. And it is, it's perfect. It's flawless. I can't find a single thing wrong with it. I think it's amazing. The seam back here, you know, it's like I said, they have blocky appearances, but you know, for production knives, you buy a Strider. I mean, if this is any indication of where he's at, I think you're safe there. Uh, moving on here to number, where are we at? Number seven, that's going to be Microtech knives. Um, Microtech is, uh, they're on point. Um, I've, I've handled a ton, a ton of Microtech knives. And they're always, I mean, like, I'm, I'm thinking back to my, this is a um, a uh, Combat Truidon Hellhound, right? It's my second Combat Truidon. This is a 2019 model. Um, can we see right there? Yeah, February 2019. My last one was from 2014. Um, couple of changes on the design, but in terms of fit and finish, it's been the same. He, I mean, like, you, people have been getting precision products from Microtech Knives for a super long time. Everything is always just crispy nice, you know? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with their folding knives, but I have handled, handled an LUDT and it was indicative, you know, the same type of, it had the same indicative nature of their quality as, as their OTFs, which is primarily what I've had experience with. If you fork over the money for a Microtech knife, just know that that, you know, if, if you tell yourself like, ah, I'm somebody who's super picky, am I really going to be happy with, yeah, you're going to be happy with a Microtech knife. Um, they get everything exactly right. And it is very satisfying to open the box to, in this case, a $600 knife and open it up and find that everything is perfect. So that's awesome. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7. We are at number six here. This is a, um, this is one I was a little nervous about because people are going to go, that should be way higher on the list. <laughs> Just wait till you see the rest of my list. Uh, number six is going to be Riat Knives. Um, taking form in this Todd Begg uh, three-quarter Quaken. This is the Steelcraft series that Todd Begg Knives did. Um, or I guess it, it's actually, uh, yeah, sorry. I was looking at the logo there, bending over and looking. Um, Riat Knives is just amazing. Um, this is uh, uh, ceramic bearings. We can ha we've, we can see here contoured uh, DLC coated titanium. And then you've got these just beautiful carbon fiber inlays. Um, truthfully, the knife that did it for me with Riat was the Jack. Um, not, the, not the new one, but the uh, original integral Jack. Uh, mine was flamed uh, titanium, full, you know, all one piece. Um, and then it had that marbled carbon fiber inlay, and then I had a damascus steel blade. Looking over that, you know, all of the little opportunities there were for error. It's not it's not super easy to machine an integral, but to get that right and then get everything else right, have the blade centered, which by the way is always the case with Riot knives. I I mean, like the, the blades are always just spot on. Lockup is always spot on. Everything is just perfect. Blades are ground perfectly. Um, but yeah, on that, on that Jack, I was just like, man, there's so many things they could have messed up on here. And it wasn't just mine, like just reading, you know, getting into the forums and, and, uh, you know, 
um, reading things online about people's personal experiences with the jack and everybody's like, oh, it's just perfect, you know? So yeah, um, I've handled many knives from Riot, many collaborative efforts between Riot and other companies, and the final product is always perfect. Um, if, uh, if you are purchasing a knife that is made by Riot, rest assured, it is going to be flawless or, you know, with, within a hair of, of absolutely flawless. Um, so feel good about that. Next up here, number five. Um, truthfully, most of these knives could, could almost go in any order, but I think these top five here are really, um, <laughs> it's really hard. It was really hard to place them. Um, number five is going to be Chris Reeve knives. Um, we have not done a review on this beautiful uh, Sebenza 21 yet with the carbon fiber inlays, but I have never, none of these five, right? Some of, the, some of these last five, I've only experienced one example. I'm having to go by what other people say online, but I've handled many Chris Reeve knives. They're always, there is, there's no fluctuation in feeling of action, in lockup, in the way that, you know, the way that the tumbling looks, you know, where the cutting edge is. It is just insane. The action is always, it always has that same hydraulic glassy smoothness, right? The, uh, the uh, feeling of the, uh, I mean, now this is a polished surface. I'm used to the bead blast surface, which is about right here. You know, you can see it on the um, frame lock there, but it's always the same type of thing. Uh, I've handled the um, the 25, the uh, Inkosi, the Umnumzan, and then another 21 and this 21. And it's just, it's the same feeling every single time. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I've heard people say the Sabenza 21 is outdated. Well, they got the 31 coming out now. Or they say that Chris Reeve knives in general are outdated. I don't think so. I think it's a situation where it's like, well, why fix what isn't broken? <laughs> Guy invented the frame lock, helped um, bring S30V and S35VN to the table. Um, the guy knows what, it, what he's doing and clearly continues to make a precision product, even though I don't believe he is still involved with the company. I could be wrong about that. I just remember hearing that. Anyways, Chris Reeve knives, absolutely deserving of number five. Number four, I think this is going to shock a lot of people. I had to be, um, because people, I think people are trying to guess what my number one is. And I think, uh, you guys are wrong because I'm trying to be honest about this. Number four. Rick Hinder knives. Um, I love Rick Hinder is my favorite knife maker. It's my favorite brand. I've owned. I, I truthfully, I think I've owned more Spydercos than Hinders, but I have owned twenty five Hinders. And for those of you who've been subscribed for a while, you're like, we know you say that all the time. You're a big Hinder fan. Shut up. Um, yeah, I love Hinder knives. And uh, here in Generation Six, I have hand. I've seen and handled and been around many Generation Six knives. I think those are the best examples of where he is at as a manufacturer. It's not just the final product in the case of Rick Hinder knives. I mean, everything is perfect, right? Centering's perfect. But even when you buy aftermarket, not aftermarket parts, like this titanium scale, you can't get it with the XM18, standard production XM18, uh, brand new. You have to purchase it separately and then install it. Everything always fits. This titanium scale, I've had it forever. And I, it has been, if you look back on my channel, my very first video has this titanium scale in it, and it was on a Generation 4. And guess what? It's, it fit on a Gen 5 Sheep's Foot, which is also on my Hinder playlist, and it fit on multiple Generation 6 uh, XM18s, uh, all of which you, you can see on my channel. Everything always just fits perfectly. Everything, I don't have never have to force anything in place. It's just awesome, right? And there's a whole, a whole massive market of parts that you can, you know, uh, that are modular between a lot of these models. And so that really takes some precision manufacturing to make sure that that is the case. On top of that, I'm still getting nearly fall shut action and just crispy, perfect action every single time. Very happy with, of course, blade centering and lockup. Everything is just fantastic. Rick Hinder knives, absolutely love them. Moving on here to number four. This was a, uh, this is a knife that I've only experienced one of, and this is apparently an older model. I've heard many good things about the precision manufacturing of this um, this company uh, or this brand. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna say that just after handling this model, it, with it being an older one, I was like, yes, absolutely, this is incredible. I don't think people are gonna argue with me. And that's Shirogorov knives. Um, this is, I mean, just look at it. This looks like precision, right? <laughs> this is an older model that's running on uh, phosphor bronze, but take a look at that pocket clip and the fitment of all the hardware, the backspacer, uh, the carbon fiber, and how the um, the hardware meets up here. And, and take a look at this blade. I mean, 
oh, it's just so, it's almost like retro future uh, precision. You know, it's like, it looks futuristic, but it also looks like something that you might see in the movie Blade Runner. Um, it's just really precise. And it makes me want to go, well, what does a 2019 Shirogorov look like? Because that's incredible, right? I mean, I, I used to look at Shirogorov knives and be like, what? Why do they cost so much money? It's a production knife. I mean, yeah, it's carbon fiber, it's titanium, and it's S90V, right? Why do they cost so much money? They take this stuff seriously. Uh, you buy a uh, Shirogorov, you know, you, you, I mean, like they make customs. You buy a uh, production variant of a Shirogorov knife, I think you're looking at something around 900 bucks. I don't know. The prices are, are kind of all over the place, and I don't know as much about uh, Shirogorov, but um, yeah, you are, uh, you are definitely going to get a perfect knife. That's for sure. Moving on here to number two, I had a hard time um, putting uh, number one and number two. So let me say, between one and two, these things could go in either spot. And I'll explain exactly why my number two is my number two and my number one is my number one. Um, both of these knives, fantastic. One of these I have not reviewed on the channel yet. Um, number two is the uh, is, is Holt uh, Bladeworks, I believe is the name of their company. They are in-house. These are, and now a lot of people would go, those are custom knives. This, this is where the line, like these knives are truly where the line gets blurry, right? These are, these are the ridiculously ultra mega high end of production. There are some custom elements to them. There are, there are some extra attention. There is some extra attention, you know, some human interaction, but you know, arguably the same is to be, could be said of any of the last three that I showed. Um, but uh, I had heard such good things, and, and perhaps um, I built these up on a pedestal, and I and you know a lot of people would say like, well, you've only experienced one. How do you know? Um, I built it up in my mind to be something, and when I handled it, it was exactly that, and perhaps a little bit more. And that's always good. You could say that I set myself up for that, but you you who know uh, who have ordered a ton of knives, it's more likely you build something up in your head and it lets you down. This was not the case. Um, every last line on this is absolutely flawless. The fact that I have false shut action on a blade that is incredibly thin and incredibly light is, uh, honestly, it feels miraculous to me. It, it's amazing. Everything is so crisp. Um, the attention to uh, detail here on the 3D milling, I mean, I'm sure you guys are seeing that. It's almost an optical illusion here. It's just wonderful. Look at the backspacer. Look how perfect those lines are. It's just insane. The pocket clip, the little slot in the back for the pocket clip. Um, you know, these are expensive and not everybody's going to agree with the price. In fact, not everybody's going to agree with the price on any of these. Even the ZT, you know, right up first, somewhere around two to 250 bucks. Um, these are substantially more and they are also pretty much completely unobtainable except um, by the secondary market right now. So that that's kind of a problem. Um, but uh, yeah, these are precision. The only reason that this did not make number one for me is because I have never handled another one. This is the only one that I have ever handled. This is the Spectre V3, by the way. Uh, and so, and I'm not saying like if I handled another one, it might have made the number one spot. No, number one and number two are pretty much interchangeable for me. Um, but I just wanted to let you guys know, anybody who has been considering this or if you are next in line to have yours made by Holt, um, yeah, you're going to be happy with it. This is insane. There's a full review of this knife coming up on my channel. So keep an eye out for that. Okay. Number one, I'm sure you guys are guessing. Well, if it wasn't hinderer, right? If it wasn't hinderer, well, maybe you guys can guess. Um, number one is, uh, Koenig knives. The Koenig areas, I've handled two of them and they both, other than the front scale have felt identical. This is precision. Like, I'm, I'm sure, you know, people could say, look, if you handle a whole bunch of other knives, you know, maybe you would have a little bit better idea and maybe your list would change. Now, I've handled a lot of knives and what I consider a good knife, what I consider a high quality knife, I'll tell you guys right now, you know, I handle a, a Spyderco Shaman. That's a, that's a well-made knife, you know? I mean, very, very um, good attention to detail. Um, uh, I've handled more than one. They seem to be pretty similar. Um, very precision made knife. And it's that those are nothing compared to a not gonna say nothing. They're still great. Spider Co Sham is one of my favorite knives of all time. But no, the um the final uh product in a uh Koenig uh area, and I've actually handled a goblin too, uh mini goblin, is just uh it's absolute perfection. Uh the other one that I handled and reviewed on this channel had a red carbon fiber front scale and was lent to me by uh Mr. Jeff Goodnow. 
Um, and this is, it feels exactly the same. It just feels slightly heavier because of the titanium scale. But uh, not just in design, right? And we're talking mainly about the areas here. But uh, Bill Koenig clearly has an eye for detail um, in aesthetics. And he's able to mix that perfectly with ergonomics and function. And on top of that, um, the, uh, you know, the precision work that he does, you know, to make sure that the final product is absolutely perfect is um, it's clearly translating. Um, these are insane. They are insane. And truthfully, you know, I always thought, well, okay, yeah, the Koenig Arius is a great knife, but man, they're freaking expensive. They're so expensive and they are unobtainable. Actually, they're, they're more obtainable now. And a quick look at DLT Trading and some other similar um, retailers that have them. USA Made Blade has them sometimes. Um, you can get a full titanium Koenig Arius with M390 for less than it costs to get a full titanium Hinder XM18 in 20 CV and M390. Boy, you know, like this without the blue hardware, you're looking at about 580 bucks. And that's gonna be a lot, that's gonna be way too much money for a lot of people. And these do definitely get more expensive, but man, they're just, it's insane. The Koenig Arius is, uh, I mean, uh, it's flawless. It's perfect. Both examples that I've handled, absolute perfection. If you're gonna spend the money on a knife and you're like, I am the pickiest of the picky. I want perfection. I want to I want to be able to look inside of the heads of the screws and not see a single tooth mark on anything. I want to know that everything is perfect. Koenig Arias. Uh, that is the knife for you. If you're not satisfied by the Koenig Arias, you will not be satisfied with anything. Um, and truthfully, the same, like I said, same goes for the Holt Spectre. These two knives are the most perfect perfectly manufactured knives I've ever seen in my life. I did go over them with a magnifying glass and I just, I can't find a flaw. They're amazing. Um, guys, that's going to be pretty much it for today's video. I hope you were at least entertained by this. Like I said, it, it's very likely that the comment section is filled with manufacturers that I should have included or objections. That's fine. Um, there's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly open to discussion. In fact, if you have an idea of a manufacturer um, that I should have included um, in, uh, in this list, um, let me know. I'd be happy to hear your thoughts. Um, absolutely. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.